although esters are less acidic than aldehydes or ketones, just like aldehydes and ketones, esters can also undergo condensation reactions. Now recall in our discussion on aldehydes and ketones, when aldehydes and ketones react with bases, they can produce molecules known as aldols or beta hydroxy molecules. Now in a similar way, esters can also undergo reactions in the presence of a base to form a condensation product known as the beta keto ester. And this reaction is known as the Claisen condensation. So in the Claisen condensation, we basically take esters, react them with some type of base to produce the beta keto ester. And let's begin by examining the first a uh, step of this reaction mechanism. So let's begin with our step number one. We have our base, which is usually the alkoxide. So the alkoxide acts as the strong base, deprotonating the alpha hydrogen off of the alpha carbon of this ester molecule. And we form this resonance stabilized intermediate, the enolate intermediate. Let's call this intermediate a. So basically we have the enolate and we also form the alcohol from this alkoxide. Now what exactly can this enolate do next? Well one of two things can take place. So the first reaction that can take place is these lone pair of electrons on the carbon, on the alpha carbon, can basically deprotonate the alcohol and this reaction will take place and go in reverse and form this alkoxide as well as our starting material, our ester. So this reaction will simply go in reverse. But the other reaction that can take place is as follows we can take this enolate and if we have a second ester molecule that is present in close proximity to these lone pair of electrons then this can act as our nucleophile reacting with the Lewis acid this carbon oxygen double bond of this ester and so we form a bond between the alpha carbon and this carbon of the carbonyl group of a second ester molecule and we for this addition intermediate addition product that we're going to call intermediate B. So basically step number one leads to the enolate intermediate A and step number two leads to this addition product addition intermediate we're going to call intermediate B. Now what exactly can happen next? Well, basically, this oxygen can we form a pi bond with this carbon. So if we form a pi bond, one of two things can happen. We have two leaving groups on this tetrahedral intermediate. So if we form the pi bond and this bond breaks off, then we go in reverse and we form this intermediate. But if this pi bond is reformed and this alkoxide group is kicked off, off, we go on to form our intermediate C that is the beta keto ester. But this is not the intermediate that is the final product. A fourth step and a fifth step will actually take place as we'll see in just a moment. Now let's go back to this reaction for just a moment. Notice that this arrow is shorter than this arrow and that's because this is thermodynamically more unstable and higher in energy than our starting material. So if we look on the following energy and reaction progress axis where this is the energy axis, if this is the starting material then intermediate A is higher in energy than our starting material. Now if we go on to form pro, uh, intermediate B, intermediate B is somewhere here. It's also higher in energy and less stable than our ester, in, uh, than our ester starting material. And if we follow this reaction to form the beta keto ester, which we'll call intermediate C, the beta keto ester is actually 
actually thermodynamically less stable and higher in energy than our starting materials, the two ester uh, reactants. And so this will not be the final product because it's thermodynamically unstable and higher in energy than this starting material. And so what will happen next, once the alkoxide group is kicked off, it will act as a base and react with this acid. So this beta keto ester is much better of an acid than our starting ester molecules. And that's because this contains a very acidic alpha hydrogen. The pKa of this is about 10, while well, the pKa of this is about 24. So this is, however, not the final step. The beta keto ester is higher in energy and less stable than the two starting materials, our, our two esters. So therefore, to lower the energy of the beta keto ester, the alkoxide will deprotonate the alpha hydrogen of this beta keto ester to form a resin stabilized anion that is lower in energy and more stable than then our starting material, these two ester molecules. So basically, if this alkoxide formed in this step deprotonates the alpha hydrogen, one of these alpha hydrogens, we produce a resin stabilized molecule, the anion that contains three different resin stabilized structures. So we see that the negative charge can basically be placed onto this carbon, th uh, this oxygen, or this oxygen. Now this is step number four. We basically form the product D, or actually the intermediate D, that is lower in energy than our initial starting materials. Now, notice what actually happens in this step. So we begin with our base, our alkoxide, and the final step does not actually regenerate the alkoxide. In fact, our alkoxide is uh, basically used up in this step number four to form our alcohol. So because no base is, actu is actually regenerate in this condensation reaction, this reaction is not a catalytic reaction. It's not catalytic, meaning that we actually have to use an equivalent amount of this alkoxide to, for this reaction to actually take place. And in the final step to basically form the beta keto ester, we take this resin stabilized anion intermediate D and we react it with hydronium in the presence of water, which basically acts to protonate this carbon, this alpha carbon, and we form the final product, the beta keto ester. And even though the beta keto ester is higher in energy, than the starting material, there is no more base present in our mixture for the reaction to go back in reverse because all the base, all the, uh, all the alkoxide that we began with initially was basically used up in step number four because we went from the alkoxide to form the alcohol. So we see that the clays in condensation is not a catalytic reaction because the base is not regenerated at the end because we go from the base to our alcohol in step number four and all the base is basically used up. Now that means that this reaction that is formed in step number five leads to the beta keto ester which is thermodynamically less stable and higher in energy than our initial starting materials, the esters, but this reverse reaction cannot take place and we cannot go back and reform the ester from this beta keto ester because we no longer have the base in our mixture. That base was all converted into this alcohol as shown. So we have this final product that is the beta keto ester. And this reaction, this five step reaction mechanism, so step one, step two, step three, step four, and step five is known as the Claisen condensation.